In this video, I'm going to show how you can create your own coding standard. Now, which coding standard should we use? Well, it really depends on the kind of code you're creating. And in any project, often there's going to be three different types of code. Most of the code, hopefully, is going to be what we call native code. This is code in which you're writing it and you have complete control over it. And since you've got complete control of it, well, you're going to be able to make it compliant to one of the, the best coding standards at the moment, that is the Misra C 2012. But I would not stop there. I would extend Misra C 2012 to add in things like style guidelines. I may want to ensure, for instance, that people don't use the tab character. Why? Well, when somebody's written code and used the tab character, it may look very nice and easy to read in their editor, but when you open it up in a different editor, you might find the tab character has a different number of characters, and suddenly the layout looks very strange, and it's hard to concentrate on what that code is actually doing. Also, you might want to put in place some naming conventions. So if you've got uh, some global functions or global variables, maybe you want to name them in a certain way. So perhaps they start with the name of the function, followed by an underscore and then a name of the, the variable or function. And finally, you might also want to add in some complexity guidelines. You may want to measure something like the cyclomatic complexity. And if that function has a value above a certain threshold, then you might want to, to create a violation for that, which maybe could be justified later. So that's the native code. Then we have adopted code. And that's code where we've, or you've inherited it from maybe a CPU vendor. Maybe the CPU vendor has provided code for managing the peripherals, in which case you basically just need to use that. You don't have complete control over it. And so you may decide, well, we'll use a subset of Misra C 2012. And then finally, we have legacy code. Legacy code is code that's been used before. It basically, it's worked. It's been proven in action. And if you try and make this compliant to Misra from experience, what you're going to do is you're actually going to induce more problems than the benefits you'll get from that. So certainly with legacy code, I will probably just check against the Misery 2012 mandatory rules. So let's take a look and see how can we create a coding standard. Now, this is TV Vision. Inside here, I've got some source code that I've written myself. So I want to make this compliant to a standard. So let's start by going and creating our own coding standard. So here I'm opening the uh, the report editor. And what I've already done, just to simplify things, is I've removed all the, the standards that are provided, apart from the ones that I'm interested in. And so here we can see I've got the, the MISRA standards, the BAR C standard, the CERT C standard, and another one here that basically is the, the minimum, just some of the mandatory rules. So let's start by creating a new standard. So I'm going to create a standard called the, the ACME standard. I'm going to say this is the ACME standard. And I'm going to say this is for, for legacy code. OK, and I'm going to base this on, let's say, the TB run requires. And we'll put that at the start. OK, so there we have the first coding standard. And as we can see, it should have the same mapping as this particular standard over here. I'm going to leave that one as it is. Let's create another standard. So again, I'm going to go and create a standards model. This one is going to be active. And then I'm going to call this the uh, native. So active, ACME is what I'm going to call it. So ACME native. And this time I'm going to base this on the Misra C 2012 standard. Again, I'll put it at the start. Right, so now we've got these two new standards. And again, if we take a look at the ACME native, we're going to see it's taking exactly the same mapping as the Misery C 2012. So let's add some additional rules to this. If you wanted to remove rules, it's very simple. I just untick them. But let's add some additional rules. Let's make sure we don't use the tab character. So let me do a search for tab character. OK. And there we can see we have the rule that checks that 
people haven't used the tab character. So I'm going to add this to the Acme native standard. And as we can see, the, the level of this is just advisory. And there may be a reason why you may want to add tab characters in. So I'm going to leave that as it is. All right. At the same time, let's uh, check the indentation. By default, it's two spaces. Well, most of my code, I think I've got three spaces. So I'm going to go and set the value to three. Again, this is required. Well, I'm going to move that down to just advisory. OK, and now let's take a look at maybe some uh, complexity. So let's make sure that we don't have any functions with a cytomatic complexity greater than, well, default is 20. Let's set this to just 10. So once again, I'm going to set this. And it doesn't make sense for this to be mandatory because maybe for some input service routines, you may well decide, well, there is no way of doing this more efficiently. We need to have a more complex function. So I'm going to set that just to required. And then if it is greater, you can, of course, justify it. Now, I've modified some things. If I hover over this, it should tell me that I've actually changed that to required and a value of, of 10. And the final thing I want to do out here is basically the naming convention. And so we're here we have a number of what we call Hungarian notation rules and I can create my own rules. In this particular case, I just want to use this one to ensure that all my global functions start with the name of the file underscore and then the name and I can add that. If I wanted my own, own rules, then I'm going to here and I can add a Hungarian notation rules. I can give it some text and then we can see this appears. I can then select it. Right, let's uh, save what we've done so far. So let's just do save and now we'll exit. And now I can go over to here and I can say for this particular project, I'm going to go and set my code review report options. I don't want the, the NISRA C 2012. I want something a little bit stronger. I want the Acme native standard and I can select that. So let's select that. And now let's go and do the, um, the analysis. So now this is starting to, to do a, a deep analysis on these files. So this is going to take a little bit of time. And as we scroll down, we're able to see here that it's starting the analysis. And we just need to wait a few seconds for it to, to finish this. And then we'll be able to take a look and see, well, is our code compliant to this new coding standard that we've created? So in this case, I created a coding standard for C. I could, of course, in exactly the same way, create one for C++, and I can create as many standards as I want. Right, that's just about finished. It's creating some reports. So now we're going to be able to switch to the results view, and we're going to be able to do a, a code review. And in this particular case, we can see, well, the code is, is compliant to, to MISRA, but I've got some additional violations here. So we can see I've got contents not indented by three spaces. This is just advisory. Well, I can double click on that and it will open up my editor and take me to the appropriate place where that violation occurs. And it looks like I've actually got one, two, three, four spaces. So that is a, uh, something that's very simple to, to fix. At the same time, I can also see that I've got here a function with a cytomatic complexity greater than 10. So that's something I need to look at and maybe review. And if need be, I can justify that or refactor it. OK, let's take a look at uh, a different project. This time, let's go and close this down and let's open the other project. And uh, this is a project that I've created some time ago. It wasn't written to be compliant. It works. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select this other standard we created. So that was the Acme uh, legacy. So let's select that. And once again, we'll do a code review and we'll see whether or not this code is compliant to this legacy standard. So certainly, it's certainly not compliant to, to MISRA, but we'll see whether or not it's compliant to this new standard. So now, as, as before, it's doing this analysis. We need to wait for this to, to complete, and then we'll be able to take a look at the results. OK, so it's analyzing the static. It's doing the complexity analysis now measuring things like the cyclomatic complexity. It's now doing the various cross-reference, generating the code review. And now let's take a look and do our code review. 
And in this particular case, we can see, well, the code is compliant. We have no violations. So there, very rapidly, is an overview showing how you can create your own coding standard. If you'd like more information, then please don't hesitate to contact us at ODRA. Thank you.